Welcome you Aries operators. Have a special today. It's in regards of uh, HPA systems. However, I call this the poor man's HPA system. What I really mean, it's regulated CO2. Now I'm very sure for people who's not very experienced with uh, working with CO2, uh, you're probably starting to think, oh my God, I'm gonna blow up my airsoft gun if I use CO2. Not true. Just like uh, HPA systems, you can regulate CO2 and you could regulate it that it will work like a, a kind of like a low pressure system. Um, right, I, right now what I have is I have a CO2 regulator right here. And obviously I have a 20 ounce uh, CO2 bottle from my paintball days and everything. And obviously I have a hose set here and I have uh, Bingo's Airsoft, uh, actually a compressor adapter. Now this whole setup here is gonna run you about roughly, probably $105 through Amazon. I mean, if you really wanna go cheap and kinda have the constant air effect, you can do it for less than $105 if you know how to build, build up your regulators and everything. But these items I'm showing you here, you could get roughly, you could pay about roughly $105, maybe $110, and you could get this whole system um, through Amazon. And like I said, it's a cheap way of doing things. It's regulated CO2. But I'm, when I, I'm just showing you the cheap way of doing it. What I'm going to end up doing is using um, uh, HPA hose and some of CQB uh, Russian's valves um, to actually run uh, uh, my, uh, I said, my uh, GBBs actually, especially my high kappas. Now, you're probably asking also yourself in your question, how does this relate to Ares? Well, Ares only makes probably only a couple of CO2 guns. I think one is a match, single shot match pistol, and a couple of sniper rifles. However, maybe down the line, maybe uh, Ares might make a GBB, and this might be an alternative for you people who are really budget conscious that can't really afford the more elaborate HPA systems, but I was, I'm just showing you that this is an alternative, a cheaper alternative is using CO2. Now, of course, there's a couple of advantages of CO2. One is obviously the pricing of the system is cheaper. Um, you probably might get a little more shots per fill. And I guess, uh, like I said, the biggest thing is, is pricing. Of course, there's downfalls of CO2. Um, obviously, it has cool down effects and also um, liquid CO2. Obviously, this is uh, and not an anti-siphon CO2 bottle. So, you got to be careful that the bottle isn't flying flip-flopping everywhere because uh, obviously, you're going to get the CO2 liquid into your regulator and you might damage uh, your regulator and maybe, you know, spit out a couple extra cold stuff out of your gun and it just doesn't really work very well. But let's give it a try and see, you know, how well it does with my GBBs. And oh, just before we go, um, I just want to add another thing about why I like this CO2 regulator. Um, as you know, most places probably going to require you to have a tournament lock. So one thing good about this particular regulator, if you take off this cap on, on this regulator, um, you'll see a little small set screw there. You actually could set it and tighten it there and lock it down. Now, whether your field likes it or not, but, you know, I don't know what the rules are, but it will lock down the regulator that you wouldn't be able to move it. And especially if you put the cap back on, if you're going to be playing like a small CQB uh, playing field, with, especially with high cappers, you don't got the time to, you know, break down to your backpack, open up the cap, then try and screw and put it back because it's going to take you like roughly over a minute to do this if not a minute and 30 seconds, and most places like if you play in Tax City, um, you got only a two and a half minute game, so you're gonna be spending half your game trying to adjust it, which I just don't think it's really gonna, a wise time of uh, spending your time to be playing. So that's, like I said, that's one thing I like about this regulator. So let's move on and uh, see how this, this per system perform. All right, so this is a test showing that this is after I fired at least 
about another six rounds of a full mag's worth. And let's see how, how steady the, the CO2 stays. I've noticed that it start leveling off at 295. So the earlier tests I was running on a full tank. So now this is a tank that's been used at least six mags now. 296.9, 9, 293.8, 296.2, 298.1. Let's do a few quick shots. 288.4. Like I said, it always drops off a little bit. 290.6. Two ninety point five. So, like I said, if you're gonna rapid fire, expect a five FPS loss. But shooting at two ninety, roughly with twenty five gram BBs, you should be doing about roughly three twenty five ish or maybe three twenty F ish on twenty gram BBs. So this is still the leap force twenty five grams. So still pretty good. I mean, like I said, this is the seventh mag, no cool, real cool down adverse effect. Two ninety, two ninety three. 293.9, 293.7. So still very consistent. So, and overall to conclude, um, this is a cheap rig. Like I said, I did this all in less than uh, about roughly $120 with the line. And you don't need a tournament lock or anything because I maxed out the rig on this. So you can't really turn it up on the field because this is your maximum you can shoot. So. For CQB, this is just great for a system. Um, if you're gonna do field, you better start thinking of a, probably a bigger regulator. But the Amazon one, the CO2 Amazon regulator one, it's really from Interstate Pneumatics. Um, it'll do just fine. You find them about 64 bucks, roughly. So if you wanna shoot, uh, uh, like I said, up to 400 FPS and all that, like I said, you better start thinking of a bigger regulator. So. For CQB, this is just fine.